City Library presents this recorded webinar from Wednesday, May 27th with local chef and entrepreneur Danielle Inamande. There is a link to her blog in the description where the recipes will be posted. Thinking, um, I'm going to kind of start with the topping for the dessert first, just because it has to go into the oven. So um, what I have here, which I've already measured out for you or in this bowl is uh, I have flour. This is gluten-free flour, um, but you can use any flour that you like. I have gluten-free rolled oats, light brown sugar. I have cinnamon and I have pink sea salt, which is my go-to when it comes to um, salt. I am also going to add some chopped pistachios. Now you can use any type of nut that you might have on hand. I happen to have um, some pistachios that I wanted to use up. So I'm gonna add them in, but you can add um, pecans or walnuts. It's about three quarters of a cup. I'm going to save this little bit of extra and sprinkle them on the top of the peaches at the end. And then I have six tablespoons of um, melted butter, okay? And what I'm going to do here is get this all combined. So the concept here is um, a crumble topping that I'm making that will go on top of the grilled peaches. Um, now you can do the peaches on your stove top, which I'm going to do today, or you could do them on the barbecue. Okay. So we can talk about that and what you would need to do to adjust if you're doing it outside on the barbecue. So this is, couldn't be easier. You're literally just mixing this all, making sure that the flour, the nuts, the oats are all well incorporated. Um, if you are concerned about sugar, you can use coconut sugar, you can use maple sugar. You can um, probably even use maple syrup, okay? So there are ways that you can adapt based on what your dietary needs are. So what I have here is a baking sheet that I've lined with parchment, and I have my oven already preheated to 400. Okay. There. And then I'm just going to, you know, kind of flatten it out a little bit. You don't want it like totally flat and pressed down but you're just gonna kind of flatten it. You know what would be really delicious too would be hazelnuts, um, if you have any of those on hand. So you just wanna kind of get it in a rough, roughly uh, single layer. And you okay. said someone who wanted to check what kind of flour you were using. So I'm gluten-free, as you know, I, I do have celiac. So when it comes to baking, I only use gluten-free flours. Um, she wanted to know which one, what kind of gluten-free flour you were using this time around. To be cup for cup, because it's what I had on hand. Um, you want to raise it up? Can you see me? Uh, this is cup for cup. This is in the green bag. It's their wholesome blend. It's what I happen to have on hand at the moment. I'm waiting for more flour. Um, I usually use King Arthur, their measure for measure, which is accessible. It's affordable. And it's a really good all-around gluten-free, all-purpose flour. You could even use oat flour, which I love too. I love that nutty taste of the oat flour with the rolled oats in this. Um, so really, you can use anything, but this is the cup for cup. It's the green bag. And I got that on Amazon. So like, like everything else from Amazon. So I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes so that it doesn't burn. And then I will pick up with the peach uh, recipe um, at the end. So that's gonna do its thing. And now we're gonna walk over to this side of the kitchen and we're going to make strawberry margaritas. So Ava, if you wanna follow me over here. Okay, let me just rinse my hands. Okay. So I love a good margarita in the summer 
think we all do. Um, and because I'm gluten free, tequila is something that is safe um, for people with celiac. So uh, I prefer tequila blanco. It's also referred to as uh, silver. Um, it's 100% agave. So that's very important when you're gluten free or when you have celiac. So, but it's also just an all around delicious. So now I'm making enough for roughly two um, margaritas. So that's about four ounces of tequila. You can really use any tequila that you have on hand, but I happen to love that one. And I'm also going to add <clears throat> Cointreau which is an orange liqueur. You can also use triple sec. Okay, so about two ounces of that. So it's four, to two, uh, four ounces to two ounces for the alcohol. Um, I am going to add about a cup of lime juice. This, is a, this was about seven or so limes. I use a, uh, an electric citrus juicer. For that much it's and limes are very hard to squeeze and they're small and you don't really get all the juice out of them this would take you forever so again I think I got it on Amazon it's a black and decker I think it was under 20 20 or 25 dollars um, I did forget to grab I'm sorry my agave okay so um, I use agave syrup to sweeten this up uh, you don't have to use any at all. You could also make a simple syrup, which would just be equal parts sugar and water boiled on the stove and then cooled completely. So I'm going to add just about, I don't know, two tablespoons or so. It's really just to taste. And like I said, you don't really need it. Um, what I have here are frozen whole strawberries. You can do it frozen. You can do them fresh. You can even change this recipe and not use strawberries. You could use pineapple. You could use mango. You can use a blend. You can use any fruit that you like. Um, if you like the frozen texture of a margarita, which I do, um, I like to use the frozen fruit. And I take it out and let it thaw for just like a few minutes before um, I'm ready to make them. So everything just goes right in the blender, it couldn't be easier. Now I grow a lot of um, vegetables and herbs in my garden outside. So I happen to have a ton of mint um, and I like the flavor that the mint gives. So I'm gonna add a few sprigs of that in there. Um, <clears throat> again, it's to taste. You could also add um, basil if you have that, which is really nice with, um, with strawberries. Now, keep in mind, this is gonna be a little bit loud. I apologize, but let's get, this is uh, a Ninja, so it's a high-powered blender. Danielle, I think we lost sound for you. That should be okay for, for now. Um, when I'm having a party or I'm, and I'm entertaining, um, what's really nice to do to take the margarita glass, take a piece of a lime, get the juice on the rim of the lime, and then dip the glass upside down in some sugar. Uh, it's just really festive and, and pretty, and it, it tastes nice too on, on your lips. Um, so, with that being said, we just had a question: If um, yeah. you ever use lime juice in a bottle, um, or is it just that much uh, better with fresh limes? I don't really like lime juice in the bottle for this because you're, you're, the fresh lime is just going to impart such a different flavor than the lime juice. The lime juice is usually like really concentrated too, so I prefer fresh. If it's just like a splash here and there in a recipe, I'm totally fine with bottled lemon or lime juice. But for this, you kind of need to do the, um, the fresh. So there you have, I mean, how pretty are those? Ava, can you get in? 
a little closer and show everybody how beautiful those are? Okay. All right. So that is the margarita, and I think I need to taste some. Mm, that is so good. Okay, well, let's go back to this way. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do to go along with the sort of patio, summer, margarita, outdoor entertaining is do um, a guacamole. And this is super easy to do. Um, my kids do not like cilantro. Um, I'm not a huge fan of cilantro either. So I'm not using cilantro, which is traditional. Um, this is what you want your avocados to look like. Okay, this is the perfect color ripeness for an avocado. Um, if I buy the avocados and they are already pretty soft and dark like this, I pop them right in the refrigerator, okay? Um, because if they over ripen, then they just get kind of brown and, you know, kind of yucky. So this comes out really easy here. Okay. Um, let's try to get the pit out, which is always interesting. Okay. And I'm just scooping this into a bowl. Um, so, you know, for, for entertaining with, with guacamole, uh, you kind of need to plan for it because of the avocado issue, you know, whether or not it's ripe. Um, that's the only other, that's the only thing I would say. Perfectly ripe. It comes out super easy. Um, you don't want any of that. Okay. All right. These are like relatively small. So I think I'm going to use two. If they're really big avocados, one and a half should be okay for this recipe. And obviously, you can scale it up or down depending on how many people you're serving. Um, I have red onion here. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, red onion. Um, I am going to add a tiny bit of, of salt. Okay, pink salt I like. I also like to use Sorry, right. we have a finger on the camera. Oh, maybe there's a finger. You good now? Okay. Okay, I'm just using a little bit of um, white pepper. It, it really, it's not a big deal. You could use whatever you have on hand. Okay, I like to put a few dashes of um, hot sauce. This is a Chipotle hot sauce. It's not crazy hot. Um, this brand is called Siete. Um, they have great stuff. They're all natural. Um, you know, and again, you can put as little or as much of this in as, as you want. Okay, now I'm gonna add the juice of two limes. Now, when you're just squeezing one or two limes, it's not a big deal. But when you need that much that we use for the margaritas, um, it's nice to have the, the electric. Okay. You could even do a little bit of the lime zest in here if you like. If your family likes cilantro or you like cilantro, now would be the time to add it in. Um, chopped up. You could also, I'm going to just leave it there for now, and then I could always add the other lime. I'm basically just using a stainless steel potato masher here because it's really quick um, and it gets the job done. Okay. You just kind of have to go in and you could just use a fork too. This might take a little bit longer. If you like your guacamole very chunky, you would have probably already stopped smashing this up. Um, I'm gonna leave it about there. Okay, now at this point, let me just check this, it's looking good. I think I'm gonna take that out in a second. At this point, just use a spoon and just sort of get in here and 
okay? You wanna give it a little bit of a taste for salt, for pepper, for lime juice. It's perfect. It doesn't need anything else. The lime really comes through nicely. Um, <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is serve it. I have like a million and one of these wood boards and serving bowls. I love them. Oops. Um, so I'm just going to pile that in there. You could put additional lime on the top if you'd like, just if people wanted to with this. Okay, if they wanted to take a piece and there you go. And that is your guacamole. Are there any questions about that at this point? Oh, and if you are using cilantro, you could, you know, scatter some on the top as well. Okay. You don't have a guacamole question, but someone asked if you had a non-alcoholic version of the margarita. Ooh. Um, I, I don't personally, but I mean, you could just, you know, eliminate, obviously eliminate the um, tequila. You could replace the orange liqueur with a little bit of orange juice. Um, okay, I'm going to take this out. That is pretty much what you want it to look like. And then the key here is to have this cool. So <clears throat> we're going to have this cool. And then at the end, when I, right before I serve the peaches, you just kind of break it. It's almost like the concept of a granola that you would make homemade. Um, so I'm going to stick this over here so that that can cool. Okay, this is the guacamole with the chips. The next thing that I'm going to do is a really easy shrimp dish. Um, this shrimp can be made um, on the stove top. Um, you could also do it in the oven if you wanted to on a sheet pan, but I'm, I prefer to do it um, on the stove top. So I am just going to give this a quick rinse. Okay. And get a clean knife. Okay. So <clears throat> let me talk about the shrimp. And then I will um, do my garlic and all that yummy stuff. So this is, Ava, if you want to come in on that, this is wild caught um, shrimp from Argentina. It was um, shell on, so I, I took the shells off and I deveined it all. You can use any shrimp that you want. You can use any shrimp that you might have on hand. I prefer wild caught fish whenever possible. Um, so this um, has a beautiful pink color to it. Um, the only other time that I've had pink shrimp that are wild caught would probably be in Florida, the Gulf shrimp, um, you know, that, that they catch out of the Keys. Um, those are wild caught as well in there. I, I just, you could smell the difference and you can taste the difference. So I like to use wild caught um, whenever possible. Okay, so we need about four or so cloves of garlic. And again, I love garlic. I'm Italian, we use garlic in everything. The more garlic, the better. You could use as much or as little garlic as you want, but I find that this should be four, four cloves is about, about right. All right, I'm just gonna preheat my pan to low, like medium low, and um, I'm gonna stick a little bit of olive oil. This is extra virgin, okay? And while that's heating up, I'm just gonna give this a rough chop, you know, I don't mind having pieces of garlic. You don't want them huge. You don't want anybody chomping down on a huge piece of garlic, but it doesn't have to be super finely minced. And this is great too, because you can do it ahead. So if you're entertaining and you know, you're know you sort of wanting to spend as much time outside with your guests as you can, 
um, you know, you can have all this sort of prepped ahead of time. I like to drain the shrimp on um, paper towel. That way they're not wet when I put them in the pan. Um, okay. So the garlic is chopped. I'm just waiting for the oil to get a little bit hotter. Okay. I like to try to keep my kitchen as neat as I can. Um, while that's heating up, I'm also going to add, um, when I'm doing the liquid part of this, a little bit pinch of saffron, which is nice, paprika and a bay leaf, which just kind of infuses um, like more of a Spanish sort of Mediterranean um, note to it. <clears throat> but again, if you don't have that on hand, it's, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to add that in. Okay. Okay. So let that sort of go. You want to always cook garlic over low heat. Otherwise it burns really quickly. And then it gets just like a yucky um, kind of taste um, in your mouth. Okay. Now at this point, I'm also going to throw in um, one bay leaf. Let's see if I can get a whole one. This is a dried bay leaf. You want to make sure when you're using bay leaves that you take them out before you serve because they're not edible. They're really just um, for flavor. Okay. You can also add in your paprika now. And I like to add it in now because it sort of cooks and toasts along with the garlic. Um, so this is about a half a teaspoon of paprika. You could also use um, smoked paprika if you like. And then I'm also going to add um, a little pinch of crushed red pepper, okay? I use crushed red pepper in almost everything. I don't like things to be super spicy where my eyes are tearing, but I do like to have a little bit of that heat at the end. Um, okay. So just sort of let this hang out okay, and do its thing here. And you can already smell the garlic. Okay. And this dish, you know, really comes together pretty quickly. Veronica, are there any questions while I'm sauteing? Or Not at the moment, but just as a reminder, if anyone wants to throw a question into the chat, I'm happy right. to relay it. And I'm happy to take questions on anything, cooking, baking, gluten-free, not gluten-free. Um, okay, so at this point, you can, you can really smell the garlic. Everything's sort of, to um, you know, getting nice and toasty in there. Um, I'm going to add the shrimp in. Okay, actually. And I mean, this is a 12 inch skillet, so I should be able to fit most of this in here. Um, and so you have a question, is that a ceramic fry pan? It is a, yes, it's a green pan. I, I just got it recently. It is one of the only non-sticks that I own. Um, I've been trying to move away from non-stick, but I do like to have one or two. Um, but I, I like this one because it is um, better for you than a lot of the other non-sticks on the market. Um, and I also like, if you could see that it's a straight side, so you have more cooking space. This is a 12 inch. It comes with a lid, it's oven safe. Um, so just get this in here. Um, you don't really need, I'm just gonna give this like a light little pinch of salt. Fish doesn't usually need a whole lot of salt because it's salty enough um, naturally, especially on its own. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I have a lemon. I'm gonna do 
the zest because why not? There, that's where all the flavor is. And I absolutely love lemon with fish. It's very Italian. It's very, you know, like Mediterranean. Um, and you just don't get that, you know. We have a, a question about the shrimp. Um, they want to know if you have any recommendations on where to buy shrimp or seafood in the county. Um, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I love, I, Costco has a, a pretty decent selection of, of frozen seafood. Um, I preferred the Chico's, um, not just because I live here in town, but they happen to have a very, very good fish department. Um, my husband and I are super picky when it comes to fish. We only eat wild caught. Like I said, you want to put about um, the juice of half of a lemon or so in there. And um, Jachico's just has, you know, we finally have the, the best selection. The fish is super fresh. And the gentleman behind the counter is very knowledgeable. Okay, so now I added in roughly a half a cup of white wine. This is um, a Sauvignon Blanc. I'm actually gonna get the lid out because you want this to kind of, you know, steam a little bit. This is a Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, you could also use a Chardonnay. Some people like Pinot Grigio when it comes to um, white wine that they're cooking with. You want to make sure that you're using, um, this is like a, a $10, $12 bottle of, of wine. It's not super expensive at all, um, but you want it to taste good. Otherwise, if it's not something that you would want to drink, you don't want to cook with it either um, because, you know, you want to make sure that you're, using something that has good flavor because once it cooks, it reduces down and then you get more of the flavor. I'm just gonna add a little bit of black pepper. Okay, oops, there we go. Um, at this point, I could throw in, if, I'm, if you're using saffron, I'm gonna just put, saffron is a, is a very expensive um, spice. It's like a, it's a thread. If you want to look up close there, we actually got this little jar at Costco. Um, you can get it in the spice aisle of most grocery stores as well. Okay. You can raise your heat up a little bit now. You don't want it boiling, but you want it to have like a, a nice simmer. Okay, so while that's hanging out, I am going to chop a little bit of um, parsley. Um, because parsley and lemon go so well with fish. Okay. Okay. So I have flat leaf Italian parsley. Uh, you can use the curly parsley if that's all that you have, but I prefer uh, the flat leaf. The flavor is a little bit different, um, and certainly the texture is too, but it's, it's all good. And if that's what you have on hand, then use it. Okay, so I'm just gonna give this um, a chop while that's simmering. If there are any questions, feel free. Um, I was also going to say, in terms of um, what you could serve this dish with, uh, I like to serve it with just plain rice is nice. Any type of rice that you have, white rice, you could even make a risotto if you wanted. Just keep it simple and plain and then spoon this on top. You'll see because of the wine and the lemon juice and just because the shrimp gives off its own natural juices, it will be a, a nice like liquidy. It's not gonna be a dry shrimp. So you'll have a good amount of juice there in the pan that you can sort of like drizzle on top and pour over the shrimp. So the rice is nice because it absorbs that and it makes it more of a meal. Um, or you could even use polenta. Um, you could honestly just serve this with like really nice crusty um, Italian bread um, that you've just charred a little bit. Um, and then all those juices will just kind of like soak up um, in the bread and it's, it's just delicious. Okay. I'm just going to add in 
the parsley. We love parsley, so I do use quite a bit of it. Um, okay, and I mean, shrimp don't take that long to cook. So really, I mean, I'm gonna let this go for another minute or two, just, you know, just to kind of let the parsley do its thing in there. But you could see, you know, like once the shrimp sort of curls up a little bit and it gets that nice pink color, it's pretty much done. Are there any questions at this point about the shrimp? Um, there was a question about the parsley. It was in a glass jar and she was wondering if you grew it yourself or do you just keep it fresh in the water? Um, this, I do grow parsley myself. This one happens to not be mine um, because I just cut mine down actually um, in the garden. So I'm waiting for it to, you know, grow again so I can cut more of it. Um, parsley, you, you, it, the best way to keep it is to just put it in a little jar with some water on the bottom um and like keep it in the fridge on the door of the fridge it, you don't want to keep it wet because then it starts to get like that rotted sort of the leaves start to get really brown and um dark and um kind of gooey so but i but i do grow um parsley this just not is not mine any other questions okay at this Point, the shrimp is done. Let me just show you what that looks like. I wish you could smell it. It is just phenomenal. You could even use, um, you could even serve this over pasta if you wanted to, it would be amazing. Um, and how long did that take? I mean, less than 10 minutes. It was super easy to make and it's really impressive. Um, and that orange color, is from the paprika and the saffron, which gives it like that really beautiful color. So I'm just gonna put this to the side and I am going, oops, there's a little bit of water in here. I'm going to start preheating my grill pan for the peaches, okay? Um, we can talk about the grill pan if you want. Ava, actually, let me show them. This, it, this brand is called Master Pan. Um, I love it. It comes with this great lid, which is mesh, and it has tiny little holes all over it. So if you're making something that's gonna splatter, like if you were doing a steak in here, or chicken breast, or um, burgers, you could um, put that on top. And the holes allow the steam to release so that your food still gets that nice, crisp outer um, at, at outer and not, you know, steamed. Um, so let me just grab a clean cutting board. Okay. All right. Um, I said earlier, you could also do these peaches outside on your, on your barbecue, on your gas grill. If you do that, just make sure that you, A, don't walk away because they will char up a lot faster than you think. Um, and you have to also, um, you just make sure that your grate is like super clean because you don't want, you know, like the burgers that you grilled on it before to kind of um, carry over to the peaches. Um, and you could also spray your grill as well. Okay, that I can get rid of. All right, so while this is preheating, I am going to cut my peaches in half. I need another knife. That margarita has my name all over it. Okay, so you're gonna take your peach and cut it in half. It's, these are just stop and shop. It's what I could find. Um, so I couldn't be too picky. The freestone peaches that we get during the summer are certainly a lot easier um, to do this with because they, oh, let me try not to hurt myself here. So you just want to take the pit out, okay? 
Now, if these were super ripe, they would come out a lot easier. And if they were freestone, they would come out even easier. Um, but we're gonna make two. There we go, okay. Three more to go. So you want your grill pan super hot for this. Just kind of give the peaches a cut down the middle and then just kind of twist them to get them open. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, that side looks good. I'm just gonna do two, just to spare you the pain of having to, <laughs> having to watch me struggle with these peaches. And I did have these on the counter, but you know, we are probably still a little bit of a ways away from, um, you know, the height of summer peaches. Oy, okay, all right, that's good enough. Um, I will say, last summer, I think it was last August, I had the opportunity to get some amazing Georgia peaches right here in the county at Red Hill Farm. There was the truck in the lot, um, and they were selling Freestone Georgia peaches. They were incredible. So if you have the opportunity. Now, I have some butter softened here. Okay, I'm just, like it's super soft, so I'm just putting that on the cut side of the peach. And because you're doing that, you really don't need more in the pan, okay? And then this is pretty hot, actually, let me grab. Okay, so you just wanna, you could hear that sizzle. You just wanna put these cut side down, okay? And then don't touch them. <laughs> I know it's hard, but this is like medium heat or so. You don't want them too high. Um, excuse me, because then they'll burn. Um, but now what I'm going to do while those are doing their thing is grab my crumble here. Okay. Actually, let me move this oops, out of the way and bring this over. And I'm going to grab some gelato. Okay. I should have opened this earlier. So this is just a nice way to serve the peaches when you're entertaining. This is just some pistachio gelato, so I'll let that sort of hang out for a second. Um, okay, let me get a clean set of tongs. And I, oh, well, they're getting there. I just wanted to wash my hands super quick since I was touching the shrimp and everything. And I have to crumble a little bit of that topping that we made earlier. So I'm going to show you, if you're serving this and you wanted to do it individually and make it, you know, a little bit more fancy, if you will, um, you can put it in an individual little dessert cup like that. Um, let me grab my ice cream scoop. Okay. And you can use vanilla ice cream. You can use a dairy-free ice cream if you can't tolerate dairy. Okay, let me check on the peaches. That's what you want. Those are done. That's exactly what you want. Okay, I'm just turning the pan, the flame off. I just flipped them over just for a second there while I do this. So I'm just putting a little bit of gelato in the bottom. Now I'm using pistachio because I had pistachios, if you remember, in the crumble topping. But vanilla works fine, really any flavor that you like. Um, rum raisin would be really nice too, okay? So now what I wanna do is take one of my peaches and just sort of nestle it right in there like that. And then 
I'm going to take some of the crumble and just put that right on top. And you could, you know, break this up ahead of time and just store it like in an airtight container. Um, and if you have some extra pistachios, you can just sort of put those on top too, which is really nice. Um, whipped cream would be fantastic on this dessert. Um, if you wanted to assemble them on a platter, you could just do the peaches grilled long ways on a platter. Actually, I'll do that for you so that you can see it. Um, and then you can just put, I mean, if you're serving it like a family style dessert, um, which then again, these days, I don't know that we're all going to eat off the same platter, even with family, but regardless, um, for the future, you could line the peaches up on a platter. You could put big dollops of ice cream, sprinkle the whole top with the crumble with extra nuts and maybe put some whipped cream on there and you have a really gorgeous, easy, fresh summer dessert. Um, if you can't find peaches, you can also use plums. You can use apricots I've tried it with. You could use nectarines, really whatever you like. If you can't do any type of stone fruit because you're allergic or you, know, you just don't care for it, you could also do this with pineapple, um, fresh pineapple. You could do um, grilled as well, um, and that would be delicious. So at this point, that is what I have for you tonight. Um, I just want to say thanks again, Danielle. It was lovely. I'm very Great. hungry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining. And um, I hope to do more of these. So if there's a way to get Veronica or I um, feedback, that would be awesome. Yeah, you can Mitch, always thanks. email me. I'm at Reynolds at newcitylibrary.org. Um, if you're interested in Danielle's newsletter, I did put her website into the chat before. I'll do that again. Um, but, oh yeah, I did want to mention too, I have the margarita recipe and the guacamole recipe already up on my blog. Um, the shrimp and the grilled peaches, I don't have up yet, but I'll be uploading that, um, within the week or so. So you can, um, go up there, you know, go to the blog. I don't know, Veronica, if you said that you put it, um, I just put it in the chat so they can go ahead perfect. and click right on the link. Thank you everybody. Thank you.